It is Probellum Fight Week in Sheffield and we're here at the Magnus Centre, former Steelworks, now Museum. And I am joined by Lisa Whiteside, who is fighting on a Probellum show for the first time this Friday night. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, obviously, it's a cracking show. We've got some big cards on there, old Team GB, obviously teammates. So, yeah, just can't wait to get in there and do the business. Now, you had your comeback fight after nearly three years out of the ring in July. Successful. People were expecting it to be maybe a slower start, slower comeback than what it was. I think you floored her in the first 20 seconds. How good was it to be back after all that time out of the ring? Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I was quite nervous. Like when I speak back to my coach about it, it's, like it's probably the most nervous I've been in the changing rooms. Um, and I think it was just the expectation of if I still had it, you know, my timing, ring rust, you know, it's the pressure. So yeah, it was, it was quite, you know, it was quite intense. So um, I was quite nervous I was going to start slow. So my coach was like, treat it as a 10 rounder and then go out as if it's a third round. And then I dropped her in 20 seconds and she's never been dropped in 40 fights. So um, afterwards, my coach was like, you did that a bit too soon. I was like, well, that, I boxed to instructions. So um, it was just obviously a good placement of a shot. Um, probably was a bit soon because then her tactics were then to rush in and with a head and make it a bit scruffy. So hence then I got a cut. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a good fight to come back to, um, get that first one under the belt and now relax and enjoy it even more. Yeah. Was there any point in the nearly three years out that you thought you wouldn't get back there, you wouldn't get back in the ring? Um, well, I would say, <laughs> obviously, I had my little boy um, and then um, I started training about five, six weeks after I had him. And, you know, the fire was in my belly, I was ready to go. And then I pulled my shoulder and obviously I had to have an operation. At that point, I thought, there's no comeback from here. Um, but unfortunately, I just kind of don't give up. <laughs> and uh, so I just thought, Do you know what, I'll get through this, push on. Um, did good speedy recovery, good help with the rehab. And yeah, I'm back. So yeah, you know, I've, I've been through quite a lot of things in my boxing career and the stumbling blocks, but you know, you've just got to persevere and get past them. Yeah, I mean, you were such a decorated, successful amateur. Then the time out the ring, the women's boxing, developed it, it a lot a lot in the time you were out it, it made huge advances now you're back people are talking about you you're saying that you want to start getting in the mix of the talk of the world titles is that and was that always the, the aim to to be amongst the, the sort of titles yeah obviously when I first originally turned professional then yeah my route was you know I, I want to go and get that ultimate goal and um, obviously we had my little boy me and John had Jensen and so I took that time out and there was no intention of really coming back. Um, and I think it was purely because, like you said, the game just kind of went up another level, didn't it? And I'm watching these girls boxing at certain levels thinking, well, I can do that. And so, yeah, I got that fire back in my belly. And I think once I knew Jens was safe, was 20 weeks pregnant, I was like, I already saying to my coach, can we carry, can we, can we, can we train? I want to get back in there. And um, now it's weird because my ultimate goal is to get a world title, but not for me, but for my son. So yeah, that, that's going to be my ultimate goal. Well, this Friday night, you're back in action. What are you expecting? What are you wanting from the fight? What are you wanting from your performance? Yeah, I just want to obviously be a bit more relaxed and not too like eager than last time, but just want to box well, hopefully get some really nice shots off, just show my, obviously my strength of my power, but also my skills in boxing, um, you know, because I can be a front foot boxer, I can be a back foot boxer. You know, you, you've got to, you, as an amateur, you had to change because you'd get different opponents throughout a tournament in a week's time. So you'd never have a choice of if you had a southpaw, if you had an orthodox. So um, it's just nice to be able to, it's an eight round contest and hopefully show my skills, show my levels. And then, yeah, hopefully we're getting that next step to the, in the right direction. There's been a few changes of opponent, which I suppose from your amateur days is you're sort of used to, say, you know, boxing different people in a week. Uh, you're now facing Ava Cantos. She's never been stopped. What are you expecting her to bring? Um, I'm not too sure, to be fair. I've kind of left that to my coach. I don't really, I don't look at any footage. I don't search them. I just concentrate on what I do. And then obviously the tactics come from my coach, who I trust in 110%. So, um, I expect the best of what she can bring. You know, don't ever underestimate anybody. Um, she's been in there with some good girls, so um, she's obviously she won't just come to, 
you know, be a journey woman. She'll come to fight. So that's what I want. You know, I want a good, decent opponent and hopefully she can bring that on the night for me. And providing it goes well, you get the win, you showcase what you want. What is your sort of game plan and path going forwards? Because you're wanting to step closer to those title shots. Yeah, obviously with um, Pabellum and my management, it's obviously getting them ranking points to get into a position where we can go calling and getting them shots. Because, you know, unfortunately in the pro game, it is a bit political and business-like, isn't it? So it's if you face fits and if you... Are they going to risk fighting me to then if they're not going to get that opportunity and, and things like that? So I've just got to kind of leave it up to my promoters and to my managers. And I know, you know, I'll, they'll do the correct route for me. I mean, you are quite avoided. You're quite an avoided fighter. Do you find that that's difficult? You know, you're, you're trying to progress. You want the tough fights. Are you finding that difficult? Yeah, obviously, when obviously the, uh, my managers are ringing up and saying, well, we've tried this person, we've tried that person. That's not happened. So I'm just like, well, I, I don't understand it because for me to be a boxer, if you want to be the best, you've got to box the best. And I'll never avoid anybody. You know, I don't want to. It's, it's a, you know, it's the pride of being a boxer and wanting to show your skills. So um, it is what it is, but I'm sure it can't always happen all the way through. And if I make my mark and I get them positions, then, yeah, hopefully get that position. When do you think you'll be out again after Friday night? Are you wanting to stay busy and sort of, speed it up because you had a bit of time out the ring are you wanting to sort of get those title shots quickly yeah definitely I, i'd box every week <laughs> i'm terrible i am absolutely terrible but yeah do you know what it's better to keep the momentum going isn't it you don't want long big time out so yeah hopefully um Pabellum will get me out as soon as possible uh, after this fight and you know let's progress on and progress quickly have you got your eye on anyone in the division particularly that you, you sort of would want to go after no, not really. I haven't. I haven't. Even, I don't really look into it or delve too much. I just want to be given the opportunity in that position. And you know, if I end up, you know, certain people will say, "Oh, don't box that person or box this person." It doesn't matter. Let's, you know, if it's at the end of the day, if you're going to go for a world title, and that's the, obviously where we want to go for the, the 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 main route, then you've got to box the best, haven't you? And and if I want to be a world champion, then I've got to beat that person who's got that title. So no, I'm happy for any challenge and. Um, you know, respect to all the world champions at my um, weight category and the up and coming girls as well. It's a great division, so there's some good fights out there, so I look forward to it. Have you got a lot of people coming along on Friday night to support yeah, you? Yeah, it's not too bad. Obviously, we're a couple of hours away from home, but um, yeah, I've got a great, great, like, different groups of people as well. You obviously friends, family. I've got. Um, you know, some families where the young children are coming that I've, you know, I've trained in the past. So it's a really nice, different group of people that are coming to support me. So, yeah, my family are amazing. They'll always back me. And then, um, yeah, so it should be a good atmosphere on Friday. And how good is it and how different is it now? Almost a, a new boxing career. The fact that you're a mum, you know, you've got Jensen there and you, you're fighting for him. How different does that feel? Yeah, it gives me, uh, you know when they say you get mum, mum strength, I actually do believe in it, I do believe in it because he does give me that extra drive, that extra willpower and, you know, I can't let my son down. But yeah, I get that in the, you know, and I've said to him before he was even born, I'm going to get you a world title. So um, I'm one of those people that if I say something, I've got to achieve it. So back when I first was about to get onto Great Britain, um, I told this story when I won the EU championships that, the same week I got into Great Britain, I lost my dad to cancer. Um, but I said to him, right, dad, I'm going to the EU championships. I am getting you a gold medal. And I got a smile from him. And he then passed away that day. Um, I had four weeks before going to the EU championships. I knuckled down whilst dealing with my dad's funeral, the grief of the family, the whole family were amazing. And I went out to the EU championships and got a gold medal. And that's probably going to be always been my biggest achievement. Um, in memory of my dad. However, now I've promised my son a world title, so it's another you don't one. Don't put much pressure on yourself. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm one of these. I, I always do need to have a goal. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a bit strange like that. And if I've got nothing, it's hard. I'm an all or nothing type of person. So um, yeah, it's going to be. It's there. It's achievable. And you know, I'm just going to push on, and hopefully, I get the opportunity to be able to do that. Well, Friday night. Back in action, one step closer to that world title. Best Brilliant. Of luck. Thank you.